Can I please welcome on stage Manasa Mendu, and her keynote is called Access to Clean Affordable Energy. It concerns us all. Hello, everyone. I'm Manasa, and I'm from Mason, Ohio. And before I describe my journey, I wanted to share a short urban legend. One day, a Nobel Prize winning physicist named Max Planck departed to Munich to deliver a lecture. And as usual, Dr. Planck was practicing his speech again and again. And his driver remarked, Dr. Planck, I've heard you say this speech so many times that I bet I could deliver this lecture in your place. And Dr. Planck was like, OK, that's great. But what will you do if anyone asks you any physics-related questions? And uh, the driver remarked, that's easy. I'll just have you by my side as my driver. And I'll say, that question is so easy that even my driver can answer. Now, the point of sharing this story with you is not to show you that the driver is witty, but rather to illustrate two things. First of all, I have to confess one thing. Right now, I feel like the driver, standing before such an accomplished audience of investors and entrepreneurs whom I want to learn from. And second, the goal of my presentation is to share with you uh, this true Planck knowledge, not this um, outside driver knowledge. Electricity should be all around us. It powers our homes, our schools, and our vital technologies. Yet, as uh, the prior speakers and um, the introducer mentioned, we lack access to uh, um, more than one-fifth of the global population lacks access to this fundamental. Living in suburban Ohio, I'd never given much thought to this issue. Like, I never thought twice about getting clean water from a pump or turning on a light bulb. But when I traveled to India, I realized the existence of this crisis. Every summer, my family travels to India, and here we visit my grandmother's house, which is in a pretty rural area. There, during noons, we always used to experience these persistent blackouts. And for me personally, this meant no access to air conditioning in the heat of the summer. But when I took a step back, I realized that this meant for over 1.2 billion people, they lived in the state of permanent darkness, and I wanted to do something. For those of us who do have access to electricity, nearly 80% of it comes from non-renewable sources of energy, which are not only harmful to the environment, but are also depleting and are unable to satisfy our high demand. And although we have existing renewable energy solutions, such as solar, wind, and hydropower, they are not in widespread usage due to their dependency on a specific environmental condition and their high expense. We need a globally applicable and cost-effective renewable energy solution. What if we could harvest the unused potential of ambient energy that's all around us and convert it into usable power? What if we can do this using mainly inexpensive and recyclable materials? What if we could do this in a scalable way? Answering these questions led to the development of Harvest. Harvest is an energy harvesting device that combines the piezoelectric effect to harvest wind and precipitation with organic photovoltaics to harvest sunlight in a single design. Shown above is Harvest 1.5. It is able to power a 15-watt LED bulb after three hours of charging, and it costs $5 to manufacture. Now, what you're seeing up on the screen was not the result of a single light bulb moment. It was a continuous expansion, a culmination of three years of hard work. So what is this piezoelectric effect? It's simply the ability of certain materials, certain crystals and ceramics, to produce an electrical charge when applied with some form of mechanical stress. For example, if I took two piezoelectric materials, like PVDF and PCT, and applied stress in the forms of tapping, pressing, or even the wind, they would produce an electrical charge. 
Although there are existing applications of this effect in energy harvesting, for example, there are piezoelectric walkways that convert the kinetic energy of our footsteps into electricity, I wanted to utilize this effect in a different way. I was determined to use the piezoelectric effect to harvest the unused potential of low wind speeds under five meters per second, wind speeds that are all around us but are, but are not typically usable by existing wind energy technology. When I started off on this ambitious venture, I barely had a year of experience, and of course my first few prototypes epically failed. They barely produced microwatts of power. Yet I was undeterred because I believed in the potential of this idea. I decided to try different piezoelectric materials and different designs, some inspired from prior literature. And then one day, while staring out the window, looking at the swaying of tree branches, I realized that I could emulate this motion and enhance the power output, I decided to create an appendage that would attach onto the piezoelectric material. So whenever it was bent due to the impact of wind or precipitation, it would further stress the piezoelectric material, causing it to produce more electricity. The simple step nearly tripled the power output. Another form of energy which is rapidly advancing is solar power. Alongside our glass-enclosed silicon solar panels, we have organic photovoltaics, which are far more flexible and inexpensive. Now, this warrants a question. Despite all of its advantages, why does solar power still account for less than 5% of our total energy supply? And the answer partly lies in its intermittent nature. Solar power is inherently dependent on the intensity of the sunlight for power production. And therefore, without effective storage solutions, it's inapplicable during the nights and cloudy days. To resolve this issue, I decided to combine the piezoelectric effect with organic photovoltaics to create a more consistent renewable energy solution that is dependent on multiple environmental conditions in a complementary way. This was the birth of Harvest. Harvest comprises of multiple energy harvesting leaves that uh, comprise of a solar foil surface and a piezoelectric stem. So whenever these leaves are bent due to the impact of wind or precipitation or exposed to sunlight, they produce an electrical charge. And we can use these leaves in a variety of designs. In Harvest 1.5, I attached three of these energy harvesting leaves onto a recycled water bottle to create a small, portable, and easily mass-producible energy harvesting device. Next, I sought to apply Harvest in a more scalable way. And I did this by attaching the leaves onto a vertically mounted structure, uh, specifically metallic mesh. And as you can see, Harvest is not limited towards just a three-leaf appendage design. It can be applied in a variety of scales. There are several applications for Harvest, whether it's used directly on the surface of buildings, bridges, and fences in urban areas to integrate renewable energy harvesting into the urban landscape, or even used in rural and remote areas to provide a localized source of power. Although I have achieved recognition for this work so far, my journey is far from over. There is so much potential to improve the efficiency and practicality of Harvest, whether that is continuing research on the piezoelectric effect or integrating different energy harvesting phenomenon or even conducting more field testing. The issue with this energy crisis and water crisis does not lie in the fact that we have some sort of lack of solutions or ideas to solve it, but rather in the fact that we are unable to get these solutions to the people who need it the most. And that's why my goal is to not only further enhance Harvest, but to actually deploy it to make a difference in our world. Through this process, I've learned three very important things. The first of which, you are never too young or too old or to an experienced, to see a problem in this world and try to solve it. I say try because initially you will definitely fail again and again, but eventually after some time, some mistakes, and some systematic hard work, there comes a success and a chance to impact lives. Next, one thing I've seen in my own life is that whenever I have a new idea for a project or solution, I experience this initial wave of excitement, a period of time when I'm constantly working and growing, and then sometimes the wave goes, and the motivation does as well. And I've puzzled over this issue, and I've realized that to sustain this wave, we must not only have a clear vision, but also constantly remind ourselves of where we are coming from and why we're doing this in the first place. Third, to solve these seemingly insurmountable global problems, we must come together as communities with our differences and diverse solutions. 
Collaboration is key. While I am the only one speaking up here on the stage today, I could not have done this without the support of my amazing family and group of mentors. Important question emerges in this conference. Why should we care, right? Why should we care about the quality of life in developing countries? Why should we care about expanding entrepreneurship in emerging markets? It's quite easy to go about life not caring. I believe that we should care not just because it's the right thing to do. I believe that we need to care because it's of essence that we do. Ensuring that emerging markets in Asia, Latin America, and Africa have access to effective renewable energy solutions is critical for the long-term sustainability of our world as a whole. Growing up in this time, one thing I've uh, commonly, uh, commonly seen is that we're often so eager to accept the advantages of this increased interconnected world. And I think that if we're able to do this, we must also take responsibilities for the consequences of this. There's no more over there. We are only as strong as the weakest country or individual among us. And let us accept our responsibility for our collective global future. Thank you.